The movement of the human population across our planet Earth was the result of finding areas of our world where we could resettle after previous settlements and indeed civilized culture were forced from the region during cataclysmic occurrences. As a result, we spread north, south, east and west from the Mediterranean region. We escaped the turmoil brought about by volcanic eruptions and other events that mobilized us to survive. Why else would a people migrate to colder regions? It simply was to start again after a cataclysmic event right around 12,500 years ago or therein abouts. Though no widespread agreement on this matter exists, there is evidence that a comet strike occurred around this period and the fallout from that in the aftermath of such a strike would have seen volcanoes erupting, tsunamis spreading the entire globe in an escalation of flood and crops would be killed by seawater. Dead crops and no sunlight sees us turn to the animals to survive. If we didn't eat them, we would have perished and the human race would be extinct. This is our survival on Earth, and disease would have spread in the higher populations. No way of treating our immune system would see our people weakened physically and mentally. Our bodies started to fail and life was short. We began to forget the past during these times, and because of this, we can't remember, and this is despite massive structures surviving from the before time. Only now are we beginning to date things well past the previously accepted timeline of civilized existence, and this is opening up our mind to the possibilities of the past and the knowledge that was forgotten. We are the survivors of the cataclysm, and every now and again, astonishing timelines of tens of thousands of years are carbon dated, much to the non-existence of our explanations to explain such a thing being in existence in the first place. What if we were to tell you that in a cave in Siberia, deep in the forest, at the foothills of the towering Altai Mountains of Siberia, tools have been found that have been found to date to an eye-watering 59,000 years old? You gotta ask the question. Why are there tools in existence almost 55,000 years before they are told we became intelligent. There is little doubt that the discovery of artifacts that are out of place in the historical timeline are a result of the activity foretold in the ancient Sumerian tablets. When it came to the process of survival, these people escaped to parts of the earth that, even though they were harsh, they were workable and survivable. And this is a great testament to the character and willingness of the human spirit to never give up. The discovery of these tools are even 40,000 years before the explanation that Neanderthals migrated here. The separation in time doesn't add up, so these artifacts are probably the work of a people who eventually assimilated into society. However, the bombshell discovery reinforces the unfolding view within academic circles that Neanderthals were a sophisticated people who were skilled survivors and capable of such long journeys and not a primitive people as we have been unconsciously told. Well, we all make mistakes, but it is time to begin to correct our misjudgments. The treasure trove of discoveries has been a constant archaeological surprise and ever since the discovery of this cave in 2007, some 90,000 stone artifacts and the remains of plants and animals have been recovered as well as 74 Neanderthal fossils. The Russian Academy of Science carried out analysis on more than 3,000 stone tools from the cave. And this team of researchers used a method of time stamping known as optical dating, which measures the last time that individual grains of quartz were exposed to sunlight to determine when different sediments, artifacts, and fossils were deposited from the cave. The method has proved especially useful to geologists and archaeologists alike in pinpointing when such an event in history may have occurred. With this way of dating, 
previously assumed timelines are falling to pieces, with the recovered plant and animal remains also enabling researchers to recreate the environmental conditions of that time. From this, a cold and dry climate was realized, one that Neanderthals would have used to their advantage to hunt for survival. These conditions were much different to the world and turmoil that they had left behind. The tools, which date back to 59,000 to 49,000 years ago and completely throw everything we have ever been told into disrepute, resemble the so-called Mycoquian tools used by Neanderthals in Eastern Europe over a thousand miles to the west of the cave. Named after the dig site southwestern France, the Mycoque was a period in history dating back 130,000 to 60,000 years ago which was characterized by distinctly asymmetrical two-faced tools. In stark contrast, the team note that the tools found in the nearby world-famous Denison Cave are not Mycoquian, despite it being home to Neanderthals more than 10,000 years ago. The tools found there instead resemble the so-called Lovella style, in which flakes were cut off tools off of a pre-prepared stone core. The researchers wrote, the presence of Mycoquian artifacts at this cave suggests at least two separate dispersals of Neanderthals into southern Siberia. Sites such as Denisova Cave were occupied by Neanderthals who entered the region before 100,000 years ago, while these so-called Neanderthals arrived much, much later. DNA analysis of the Neanderthal fossils provided a supporting link between the Siberian cave population and their counterparts in Eastern Europe. The team explained, these Neanderthals shares closer affinities with several European Neanderthals than with a Neanderthal from the Denisova cave. When the makers of these tools or their ancestors left their homeland in Eastern Europe for Central Asia around 60,000 years ago, they could have headed north and east around the landlocked Caspian Sea. This, they explain, was much reduced in size under the prevailing cold and arid conditions. The significance then is completely overwhelming as the researchers noted the lack of any evidence for long distance trekking and transcontinental journeys over thousands of miles from Neanderthals. On this, the study added that it highlights the value of stone tools as culturally informative markers of ancient population movements. And the researchers stated that our discoveries reinforce the emerging view of Neanderthals as creative and intelligent people who were skilled survivors. If this was the case, it makes their extinction across Eurasia even more mysterious. What could have dealt the fatal blow? The enigma endures for now. That is all for the moment, guys, as we continue to battle YouTube against a shadow banning that is now entering into the seventh month now. Just when this will end is anyone's best guess at this stage, but we continue despite the efforts to discourage us from producing this content. The problem is a platform-wide issue, but some are unaffected by this, which makes it even harder to swallow. The fact that our colleagues doing the same job, reporting on the same subjects, are untouched only adds to the strangeness regarding the situation. We thank our Patreon supporters for having our back, and hopefully these things will pick up in 2020, but the signs are just not there as of yet. But please comment below, and as always, guys, thank you for watching.